What's up guys, it's Richie Rich back yet again and today I'm going to be bringing a review of the Dragon Ball Z Majin Buu Saga. Be sure to check it out. So the Majin Buu saga, which is for those of you who don't know, this was the um, fourth saga in the phenomenal Dragon Ball Z show, starting with the Vegeta slash Sand saga, the Namek slash Frieza saga, which was the second, then the Android Cell saga, which was the midway point, the third saga in Dragon Ball Z, and finished it off with the Majin Buu saga. Now the reason I'm going to be doing the Majin Buu Saga review because um, as I was younger I always used to believe that the Buu Saga was the best out of the um, four sagas when Dragon Ball Z was, when I was watching Dragon Ball Z as a kid being shown on Toonami I used to believe it was the best. As I've grown up and watched the series later by watching like the the Kai edition, the remastered editions, all the different version. I've grown up to see that like the Boo Saga is in fact the weakest of all the um the weakest um from the narrative. Uh Boo being a final the, the final villain, you know, just plenty plenty plot holes and inconsistencies. Because um I believe the show is um it's the, the show even with um, the Buu Saga is still a 10 out of 10 show but I just do believe that the Buu Saga as a whole is a giant letdown but as I'm going through this video I'll bring up my points and evidence why I believe the Buu Saga although had ex ex uh, although had big expectations to be possibly the best saga ultimately became lackluster and a bit of a failure now the Buu Arc which originally was made in 1993 Japanese air day and was shown in in the English broadcast in early 2001 is actually the longest saga oh, spanning over a hundred episodes with a hundred episodes the Boo arc is broken down to to six mini sagas which is the great Saiyaman saga the World Tournament Saga, followed by the Barbary Saga, the Majin Buu Saga, the Fusion Saga, Kid Buu Saga, and lastly, the Peaceful World Saga. Now, the beginning of the saga actually starts with the episode where Trunks goes back to the future to kill the androids and sell from his time, which is titled Free the Future. The episode, um, actually, end of the near the end of the episode um it shows goku back in the present time with king kai you know wondering what they're gonna do next and king kai tells him that they should try and make their way to king yama and it leads to like the other world tournament uh the for the warriors of the dead one thing you'll notice when you're watching um, this compared to like the beginning of the Sand Saga, the Freezer Saga and also the Cell Saga is um, everything's more like karma now like um, the Z warriors are not really preparing for like a, a battle with like an android or alien they're not trying to search for the Dragon Ball so everything's more like um, peaceful it's more peaceful times you know as like um, while Goku's in the other world tournament he ends up winning it, he beats Pecan in the world tournament and, and the story quickly shifts to Gohan because seven years um, seven years go by Gohan's actually um, become a teenager and it shows him from his first day of um, high school where he meets up Videl and a lot of like his other like um colleagues and he also gets the identity of the great Simon to hide his uh, super sand powers from the um, people from the people he goes to school with and just the general public you can see signs the way is um, making Gohan the focal point in like um, when he's you know going into um, going into high school being the great saiyan man and even when he's trying to gather the other warriors for the tournament it's like gohan's becoming the main focus taking over goku's position because at this time goku is um it doesn't really show goku's um uh, training you know because after he wins the tournament it just quickly changes to gohan 
So I'm, I'm guessing this is where he learned like the Super Saiyan 3 transformation and the fusion, uh, the fusion um, technique. But we'll get onto that later. But it's it show it was showing that like um, early toy toy animation. They were trying to make Gohan the main um, the main protagonist of the series and that. But it, it actually doesn't quite um, end up like that. Why well, I said toy animation because even though uh, Toriyama did the manga and did the initial designs, character designs for majority of the Dragon Ball Z characters, it was still toy animation who put the um, put it for it onto the screen. And with that, they didn't take everything from the manga and put it into the anime. Now, one of my first like big issues with the uh, Boo Saga is that. It takes almost 15 episodes, but like the whole Great Saiyan Saga, which is it could have been summarized to just maybe like three or four. Um, it details so much of like Gohan going to high school, you know, him as the Saiyan protecting a uh, Saiyan city, you know, his relationship with Videl. They end up stretching that way too long. To me, these episodes always seem like filler to me because, like, nothing really um, interesting was actually going on. Like, it's completely different to how the series um, has been in the past with the slow pacing and the lighter tone being added into this arc. Shortly after the Great Saiyan Saga, the story then moves on to the World Tournament Saga. This is when Goku is allowed one day to compete in the World Martial Arts Tournament. The Chunks v Goten fight was uh, pretty okay, pretty um, good. Uh, still, it, it, it took like up to them, which you're already in like um, the second saga within the Buu to actually have an actual um, like you know real properly fight you know between um, you know uh, Vegeta and Goku's sons you can see when they're fighting that Trunks is definitely holding back he's stronger because they say he's an age older it never really shows like when he actually learned to turn Super Saiyan so like um they just always give that um like little ex little um uh, explanation that um, only because he's a year older he was training with Vegeta who was taking it more seriously that that Trunks is stronger than Goten. Trunks ends up being victorious after eliminating Goten from the fight on after Goten had transformed it into a Super Saiyan and then dashed up towards Trunks Trunks was able to dodge him turn into a SSJ as well and do a blast knocking Goten to the crowd and thus eliminating him out of the tournament. This leads me on to a problem, uh, the second problem with the Boo Saga. I am not um, convinced that um, Trunks and Goten, who I believe are meant to be like, um, they're meant to be under the, under the age of 10, like 8 and 7, that they can be super sense at that age, you know. I've heard the theory that when Goku, when when they were like um, conceived, um, Goku and um, Vegeta were already Super Saiyan, so they passed on the gene or something. But it, it's still just hard to believe because at the end, they didn't even go through any like um, like struggle. Like the Super Saiyan was meant to be this um, legendary thing, you know. And as Vegeta comments, when um, he sees Trunks transforms in in the capsule training room Vegeta says that like when was the legendary Super Saiyan transformation reduced to a child's plaything because even though Gohan turned Super Saiyan in the um, Android Saga Gohan had still been um, you know fighting alongside the Z Fighters since the early Saiyan Saga you know he fought Radis, he fought Vegeta he fought the Ginyu Force, he fought Frieza, he fought tons and tons of enemies you know but the way how it's introduced in this like um trunks is already super saiyan goten is already super saiyan with very very little training or fighting experience it makes very little sense it's like they just tried to usher that in so they could just make the um, fusion seem more cooler like okay they're both super saiyans they'll be even stronger once they fuse together Moving on to where the series actually starts to begin up, uh, the Z-Fires actually meet two mysterious opponents 
who are later revealed to be the Supreme Kai and uh, Kabito Kai who you know is a servant not servant but he works with um, Supreme Kai they came to the Earth in the World Tournament too specifically looking for um, uh, Barbadi so Barbadi wasn't there but his minions were there to collect energy from Gohan to use the free boo from the pod that Supreme Kai had put him in many many years ago even though Goku and Vegeta at this point were already way stronger than Gohan um, Supreme Kai still thought that Gohan was the strongest of all the fighters at that tournament so Supreme Kai uses his powers to paralyze Gohan that allows Yamu and Spopovich to go um, to rush to Gohan drain his energy and retreat all the way to Barbadi's spaceship so like as the Z fighters get to Barbadi's spaceship where Barbadi's spaceship where um, Yaku and Spopovich took the energy they um, drained from Gohan we uh, meet two new characters to the Z universe which is Barbadi and Dubora now my third issue with the um, with the Boo arc now is the is Deborah? I think do, they state that Deborah is around the same strength. They say he's the same strength for Cell, but they don't actually state he is stronger, stronger as Cell or super perfect Cell. Deborah is feels such like a wasted um, a villain. Probably the most wasted villain in the series. Probably like King Cold, maybe um, in the freezer arc. But I'd say Deborah especially. He he looks like what a villain should look like you know he's sinister I mean he's king of the freaking demon world I cannot understand why he wasn't positioned as um, more of like um, a dominant factor in the Boo saga you know Deborah only lasts for maybe um, 10 episodes when he gets introduced as soon as the fat Boo comes out um, Deborah fights him and he's quickly he's quickly turned into chocolate and eaten by the fat Boo because even when I would watch this as a kid, um, I could never understand how the fat Margin Boo could fare, or could um, possibly beat the Bora, you know. Because that's one another thing with the problem with the Boo Saga. There's no, um, there's no power levels. They don't really state how someone is strong, how how strong someone is. They just go by like, oh. You know, like when they sense their like key power levels, that's how strong they are. But it's not really demonstrated. It's not really shown like how strong Fat Boo is because all he does is ju he just regenerates after each blast. You know, so you don't really know how powerful he is. He is able to beat Dabora and that, but it, it just feels so like messy. You know, Dabora should have been at least like maybe the he should have been like um like one of the um one of the um deep the villains they fight just before they fight super boo because when you see like deborah and super boo it echoes to back to like cell and freezer you know both are like a very like adult theme looking and sinister but when you bring out this thing like fat margin boo is going to be the main villain you know of the series it, that's what you're bringing out as the main villain it, it, there's definitely something wrong with it you know it exposes too much like you know child you know under 10 themes you know and that's not what DBZ was about you know that was something you know margin fat margin boo belongs more of like something in Dragon Ball you know Dragon Ball Z was meant to be an ad, more of an adult oriented action adventure show you know but when you put like fat margin boo it just seems so out of place you know with villains like the Bora, you know Cell, Super Boo, you know even the androids you know it just it just brought the um it brought like the coolness of the show down when I saw when I saw Fat Margin Boo that is just the one I hate of all the Boo formation Boo transformations the Boo forms that the Fat Margin Boo if I could honestly rewrite again I would never ever put him in the series at all so like to summarize, when Deborah um, confronts the Z fighters, he's able to take out Kibito Kai. He's able to um, um, he spits like a uh, he spits on Piccolo and Krillin, which turns them to stone. And um, he he and Bobbidi makes their way down to the uh, down to the spaceship. All this time, Supreme Kai is telling them, "No, you can't fight Deborah. He's you know he's way too powerful for them but Goku, Vegeta and Gohan who are the last ones remaining of the Z Fighters uh, they 
disregard what Supreme Kai's and follows Deborah and Barbadi down to the spaceship. After Goku and Vegeta take care of Barbadi's first opponents, uh, Goku beats Yakon and Vegeta beats, I believe it was Pipui. Um, it's Gohan's turn at the third stage, which um, he he gets to fight Tabora. Now this fight is nothing really special because it doesn't really last too long. Um, but what you see from this fight is Gohan has really really dropped his um, power level. You know he's um, it's weird, it's so bad because um, he went through once he beat Cell, he was officially the strongest character in the series. You know. Come the Boo Saga, he's already now weaker than Goku and Vegeta, you know, and and it's not even a weak, it's like a lot weaker, you know, that that like he transforms into a uh, Super Saiyan 2 and it, it is completely useless, you know, um, because like he didn't, he in the whole seven years, he did not do a single amount of training. His power level must have been sliced in half. Vegeta like um, because he gets angry when he's watching Gohan fight you know it's like he's pathetic so he even says that Deborah was even toying with him you know he could have beat him Deborah could have beat Gohan at any time going on Deborah is able De Deborah listens in to what Vegeta is saying about Gohan he recognizes his anger and Deborah comes up with the plan of you know using him to um, so Barbadi can enslave him control him and become and become a servant of uh, Barbadi, which this uh, it enables Barbadi to control Vegeta and make him uh, Margin Vegeta, and this leads to the um, Super Saiyan Two battle between Margin Vegeta and SSJ Two Goku. Like this part in the series, like the actual Goku Vegeta fight, is the actual strongest part, uh, one of the strongest part in the Buu Saga, I believe, because. It, it the fight was treated very serious it felt um very like um brutal you know that's the one way i could describe the vegeta goku fight it felt brutal you know like vegeta in a way was actually out to kill him you know even the speech he gives to goku about like how like i am a sand prince <laughs> prince and i've had to watch you like surpass me over to over and over and you've had, even saved my life in some instances you know it's like um the whole fight had been building up for so long and when they actually fight it's like this kind of like epic showdown in terms of comparing this to the first fight they had in the sand saga i'd say the sand saga fight was a little better because um that was again the first time they fought and um more i think more things were on stake like how vegeta came to earth with the intention of getting the Dragon Balls, wishing for immortality and possibly just destroying the planet and where Goku was coming to, um, Goku was rushing back from Snake Way after wishing back to come defend the Earth. Another reason why the Sand Saga one is definitely better than that because uh, it, it, when they first fight in the Sand Saga they're both like roughly equal strength you know Vegeta is meant to be stronger but Goku because of using his K.O. Kan technique and the other skills he learned while he was training with King Kai he was able to match Vegeta blow to blow the problem with the Boo Saga one is that Goku had the SSJ3 transformation which he could have used at any time any time to take out Vegeta meanwhile as Goku and Vegeta were fighting uh, to find each other um, Gohan and the Supreme Guy went down the um, spaceship went down Barbadi's spaceship to find where Majin Buu's uh, board pod was located and they confront Barbadi and Deborah it did feel quite tense when Gohan was trying to like you know summon up all of his Super Saiyan powers to you know unleash like a Super Kamehameha on the Majin Buu, uh, the Majin Buu pod because the way Supreme Kai had um, you know constantly been telling them like oh we can't unleash this monster on the world he will vaporize everything you know um, Gohan at that moment understood the seriousness of the situation and you know he unleashed the biggest super Kame super Kamehameha on the um on Majin Buu's bull pod which we were led to believe that which would destroy him because after Gohan had blasted it the pod does open a puff of pink smoke first comes out of the pod then after a few moments the uh, puff of smoke um, forms into uh the fat Majin Buu and um, 
quickly he dispatches of um if I think he believe he, he beats the boar first, he turns him into chocolate, eats him, he kicks Gohan's ass and it was funny enough as well is um Supreme Kai actually lasts longer against Fat Boo and someone's gotta tell me, is um Gohan that weak that he's not as stronger she's not stronger than Supreme Kai because uh, Gohan is not even a lay and Gohan was unable to lay a hand on Fat Boo. But Supreme Kai was actually doing a lot of hits before he got knocked out, you know, because once Boo got a hold of Gohan, he nearly killed him. It was actually after Supreme Kai who had to like um uh like he put he put like this kind of like um field on like the uh Majin Boo's blast because Boo blasted Gohan like far far into the sky and uh Supreme um Supreme Kai had to um like contain the blast so it will allow Gohan to fall down where he remains unconscious in a forest for a pretty long time so guys we've come to the end of part one for this video uh please stay tuned because I'll be putting up the part two of the Margin Saga review very very soon very soon so um yeah um stay tuned and um Please, any comments, you know, always remember to subscribe and uh, try to share the video. And again, with your comments, you know, let me know how you, you know, felt about like um, the Boo Saga, you know, did you have the same kind of um, feelings that I had or was your ones different, you know, just anything that you um, think I may have missed, just let me know in the comment sections and soon I'll be back with the part two review. Peace, two fingers.